Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS and welcome to episode 6 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future episodes. In this podcast, I'm talking to my friend Cosmin from Denmark. Cosmin is a data scientist, is a blogger, and he also runs the Apache MXNet meetup in Copenhagen. We talk about getting started with ML, running your machine learning projects right, best practices, and a whole bunch of different things. So I'm sure you will enjoy that conversation and you will learn a few things. Um, let's not wait. Let's just listen to Cosmin. Cosmin, thank you very much for taking the time to, uh, to speak to me today. Um, I guess we need to start with an introduction. So tell us a little bit about you, uh, what you're doing today, and how you got started with machine learning. Right. Um, so I, I started with, um, with data in general um, about 10 years ago. I, uh, I was very interested in doing uh, reporting and uh, um, fiddling with the database management. So then I moved into doing more and more data engineering. And um, at the same time, I, um, I was lucky enough to work for companies that uh, spearheaded machine learning efforts in Denmark. So I naturally became interested with the data science domain. Okay, um, so c can you tell us a little bit about your company and, and the kind of projects you work on on a daily basis? Right. Um, <clears throat> just to give a little bit of, a, of an overview before I dive a little bit into details, Audience Project helps brands, agencies and publishers to plan, optimize and validate digital co co online campaigns, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, at the same time, we're also helping our customers to um, grow uh, audience segments that are of high value. So to achieve that, we use data science and machine learning at uh, several levels in our organization, from the actual projects to the operations. And um, an example is um, our solution, Audience Hub, uh, which helps our customers, like publishers, for example, to grow audience segments from their deterministic data. Mm -hmm. So we use extrapolation that is driven by machine learning models to grow this uh, audience segments. Another, uh, another example is uh, our true frequency graph that we use to uh, understand how many times an average person has been exposed to an online campaign. So for that, we don't use necessarily machine learning, but we use uh, graph algorithms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and one last example that you might relate to is um, where we have uh, used um, machine learning to understand which availability zones from uh, from uh, from Amazon are best to bid in for for EC2 spot instances. Oh, right? interesting. So that <laughs> we can we can have stability over time and also low price. Wow. So this, okay. this is an example of how we have used machine learning and data science at, at different levels in our organization to deliver value. Okay, that's pretty cool. So um, tell us about the I mean the typical project. How do you get started? You know, people tend to focus on algorithms and 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 the technicalities? Of course, it depends very much on the, on the problem at hand. The way I usually approach a project, an ML project, is that I try to use my previous knowledge or experience, and then I, I do some research online, uh, and I, I essentially trust the community, mm -hmm. the crowd wisdom. Okay. I try to find the example uh, projects that are similar to what I'm trying to do, and I try to fit that uh, into a solution for my problem. Um, also, the, the point of that is to become familiar with the problem so that I'm confident enough to discuss it. Mm -hmm. I, then I would probably move towards doing uh, some exploratory data analysis. I would understand the data, do cleaning, Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I would also approach my colleagues and ask for uh, opinions and validations, essentially, right? I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by smart people, so that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's really helpful. There's always a good, uh, good feedback. And then um, I guess I would go towards implementation. Um, I, I, try to, um, I try to productionize or to 
to have a working prototype as soon as possible. Mm, yeah. Right? That that allows me to to get, um, yeah, to, to have a framework for doing multiple iterations towards better results. Yeah. Um, I also. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that's a very important point because, um, again, one of my beliefs is that machine learning is software engineering, and you need tooling, and you need agile techniques and you need iterations and you know yeah. sometimes i meet people who tell me well you know i just spent six months researching the thing and and then you know i'll tell you in six months if i can build a model or not and for sure yeah for so sure. if you're if you're doing abs pure research you know that's okay but uh i mean you're you're working for a private company right i so, have i have business constraints exactly i need to be pragmatic we need to be pragmatic into uh, the yeah. We need to live in between the constraints of doing something that is very good and uh, doing it in a fixed amount of time and within a certain budget, right? So we need to be pragmatic. I also wanted to add one more thing that I sure. uh, it's I, I believe it's important uh, when I or we start uh, building a solution. We build it towards, um, in my company, we, we architect towards change. Okay. Right? So it's important to assume that things will change, especially mm -hmm. in ML, uh, for an ML project. The model might change. The data might change. Uh, assumptions that you had first might not uh, be realistic in, uh, in a production scenario. So assume change. And um, yeah, engineer towards that architect yeah, design. Just agility yeah. and, and validate assumptions all the time and etc. Yeah, et as much as possible. Yeah. Any any advice you would give to a young um, ML engineer to to get started right? What, what should they focus on in the early steps of their projects and and careers? To see the pros and cons. Of different uh, of different approaches, um, right? So I mean, you might say that um, neural networks are very powerful and you can solve some problems with it, but uh, how about uh, explainability, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a trade-off. Yeah, it might work in some cases, it might not work in other cases. You you need to understand your context very well. Uh, not to have a hammer and then look for for nails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you know a library very well, and then you try to use it for for everything. Again, this this goes hand in hand with the pros and cons advice. Yeah. If yeah. something doesn't work, maybe maybe it's time to look at something else. Um, not try to force your problem into a certain uh, box, if if you will. Uh, create a project for yourself. Um, that's that's what I like doing and then experiment with tools um, I create data sets I create artificial data sets or I derive data sets from uh, from existing ones and then I try to solve a problem this is what I do for example on my on my blog mm -hmm. I yeah. create some data sets and then I uh, I artificially create a problem and I try to solve it so this is one way to, to gain experience and I think experience is the is the is the most important trait to have, right? Experience right. gives you intuition, and intuition is extremely important in data science, right? It allows you to choose one model over the other. Ideally, you're able to explore scientifically all reasonable paths, mm -hmm. but in practice, it, it might not be feasible yeah. to, to do that. Right, so at that point you have to use your experience to know, narrow down where you need to look. What are actual uh, possible solutions to your problem? What are the the limited set of possible solutions to your problem? Exactly. The experience right. of the of of the team is also important, hmm. right? So the the same project might be handled in a different way, in a in a different team with different skill sets that arrive at the same uh, at the same product with the same quality right so uh, where i work we have a certain we have some experience and uh, we work with tools that we fit more we find most comfortable to work with another team mm. might find a different combination of tools to be comfortable
Yeah, so well, yeah, I guess the moral is, you know, use what you know and uh, and use the best tool for the job at any given point. Right. I think there's a combination between use the right tool for the job and use what you know. Um, if you if you only use what you know, you might be missing. Mm. Uh, um, right. So there is this tendency these days to I mean, for example, in the past, XG Boost was very popular and mm -hmm. uh, it, it, this is one of my go-to tools. Right. But if I try to use XG Boost for everything, <laughs> yeah, I see what I, you mean. I might not get the appropriate results. Yeah. It, there's a certain type of problem that I would apply XG Boost, and perhaps some other solutions would be good. But if the if the if the problem fits and my experience fits, I will use XG Boost. Otherwise, I would have to possibly look for for a different uh, a different library. Yeah, so curiosity is uh, is important, right? Trying out the new algos and the balance. The yeah. balance. Yeah, I agree. Um, so you mentioned you were using SageMaker. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What you what you like about it and uh, what you right. think uh, the, the really strong uh, areas are in SageMaker? Right. So I think the 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 most important thing for us is that. Well, there are several, but uh, the most important thing for us is that it. Um, gives us um, resources that are already provisioned with um, with the libraries that we need, and we don't need to maintain that. Um, we're using uh, um, MXNet. I have. Uh, I'm very happy to say that I'm a great fan of uh, Apache MXNet, and and that comes directly provisioned in the SageMaker notebooks. That makes our life very easy. You know, we start the notebook. We start, to, yeah. We start a notebook uh, cluster, and then um, in a few minutes, we're ready to dive into the fun stuff. We do yeah. the data science yeah. No fuss. <laughs> no no fuss. fuss. No setup. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, another thing that is great, and um, I don't think I've heard it mentioned many times, but I think it's important, is that SageMaker gracefully encourages best practices. Right, okay. it's like framework for uh, for doing data science and machine learning that doesn't force you into a certain way, but it certainly encourages best practices. Right, so you have uh, uh, you can you can easily provision machines dedicated to training and to uh, validation. The, um, um, you can do um, you provision endpoints, mm -hmm. so you, you have some separation right. in that sense. The documentation is also very, very well uh, targeted towards best practices. Right? Okay, so that's this, good to hear. This is something that we like. Uh, last point would be the efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. So the way the resources are being um, provisioned. So in the past, I would maybe uh, launch, launch uh, a GPU cluster in EMR just to have uh, MXNet running on it. And that would work just fine, but um, there would be a lot of uh, wasted dollars. In SageMaker, I can do my uh, data engineering uh, on a cheaper machine that works just fine, and then I can launch my training on a very powerful GPU machine for just a few minutes. Every dollar spent would be spent towards actual training. Sure, right? yeah. And um, yeah, there are some <laughs> recent developments for SageMaker, um, like the experiments library. Mm -hmm. So I was very interested in that. Uh, I was so interested in in that that in in storing um, trials mm. in a consistent manner. That before I knew that Sage experiments, SageMaker experiments would appear. I have uh, made uh, a commit or a pull request <laughs> to to uh, the ML Flow product that okay. is from Databricks for uh, for uh, for, a, for a plugin essentially for Apache MXNet's uh, glue on. Mm, okay. But now we have SageMaker experiment, so I'm going to see which one I'm I'm going All to right. use. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> just try both. Try both. <laughs> yes. Let exactly. us know if we're missing anything. So, Kasmin, we're uh, almost done. Any last words? Um, just uh, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to uh, to have a talk to you, uh, Julian.
Well, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. And, uh, and thanks for sharing the, the knowledge. I'm sure uh, this will be much appreciated by the, by the listeners. And That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you soon with more conversations and more content. Until then, keep rocking. Yeah.